how can PDP, the party, they not only couldn't win, they were not even number two. So you can see that something is going on. And we do not want this to be a trend. The future of our politics in this country is changing. I don't know how you are, whether you are closely watching what is going on. The level of disenchantment with the existing parties. I'm sure in all our homes here, we have so many people now who call themselves obedience. I don't know whether you have them in your house. Just ask them, where are you? Which party are you for? They say obedience. <laughs> Do you understand? They don't want us. They, do, they are not talking about APC or PDP. They are looking for alternatives. And they are, men, they are much, much more. You see all of them queuing for PVCs now. They are not looking the direction of APC or PDP. They are looking for alternatives. And if we don't curb this, if we don't make our party attractive, I do not know what will happen in the next elections. I want you guys to watch this documentary that overwent my heart about Nigerians in 1975. I want you guys to watch it. I will be right back to talk more about Nigeria politics today. 21st of 1975, Nigerian head of state, General Yakubu Gowon, opened Nigeria's second multi-million pound motor plant at a site on the outskirts of Lagos. The plant is a joint venture between the federal government, the government of Lagos, and West German interests to assemble Volkswagen cars. This is the second plant, the first in Kaduna, go on open last week. The 11.5 million Naira plant is expected to have an initial production rate of 60 cars a day. During the ceremony, General Gowon praised West Germany's previous financial aid to Nigeria, and he urged Nigerians to develop a pride in Nigerian-made products so that local market potentials could be developed to the maximum. Chico Martin, NIV News. 1975, by my estimate, is about 47 years ago. Nigeria were productive. Nigeria were industrious. Now, what happened over the years is what we cannot give answer to. This was during a military regime, and a lot of things were happening, and a lot of things were going on smoothly. We believe that in democracy, that Nigeria will become a better place. That was why people fought for it. Since the date of democracy to date, Nigerians have been set backward. Nothing has been working for the countries, and everybody is blaming one political party to the others. A lot of political personnel will come out and say, I will change the course of Nigeria once you vote for me. But immediately you vote for them, nothing work. But if you watch it carefully, that the power in Nigeria has been recycling between two regions, is either from the north, or from the West. But regardless of this video you just watched, will you say or agree with me that Nigeria was far more better then than it was now? It's just a question. I want you to answer it below. Not just this, I want you guys to also watch these particular videos of what it is and how the politicians are playing politics with the mind of Nigerians regardless of the upcoming elections in 2023. I just want you to watch this. Let's try before we can get PVC. Who said that? Now, wow. We should go get last try before we get PVC. Nigeria, problem. Every time. Number one. Number two. Hello? Huh? Youth are fighting for their right. They say we should go and get last try registration before PVC. Who said that? No last try. Uh-uh. Who said that? That is for Lagos State. Abio, a party. Abio, that is the Lagos party. Yes, so. The APC party. That's the APC strategy in order for them to get us so down. Who said that? Who said that? Give us machines. Give us machines.
Nigeria is subdivided right now. The ones that want to remain in captivities and the ones that want to be set free. If you tell me the ones that want to remain in captivities are the ones that will still set their voters card or the ones that will accept a penance just to turn print, which is the youth coppers I mean to say, or the ones that will accept a, just a rapper, the market women, or the ones that will accept a bag, half bag of rice to sell off their votes. The ones that want a better Nigeria or the ones that want to be set free are the ones fighting now to say enough of PDP, enough of APC, let's try a new political party. Let's see, let's try a new person. Let In all of this, I want you guys to listen to what President Muhammad Buhari have to say regardless to upcoming elections in 2023. This is what his last speech of this year and this is what he have to say. Hello Nigerians. This is my last democracy day speech. As you are president. By June 12, 2023, exactly one year from today, you will already have a new president. I remain committed and determined to ensure that the new president is elected through a peaceful and transparent process. It is important for all of us to remember that June 12, 2023 will be exactly 30 years from 1993 presidential elections. In honor and memory of one of our national heroes for democracy, Chief MKO Abiola, GCFR, we must all work together to ensure this transition is done in a peaceful manner. I am hopeful that we can achieve this. The signs so far are positive. Recently, all registered political parties conducted primaries to select their candidates for the 2023 general elections. These primaries were peaceful and orderly. Those who won were magnanimous in their victories. Those who lost were gracious in defeat. And those aggrieved opted to seek judicial justice as opposed to jungle justice. I followed the party primaries closely from the state level to the presidential level. I was very impressed to see across all the political parties that most candidates ran issued based campaigns. The language and the tone throughout were on the whole measured and controlled. Another positive that came from the 2022 party primaries was a significant increase in women and youth, particularly across all parties. I was very pleased to see this development. This augurs well for the future. These trends clearly show the level of maturity our democracy has achieved in the last 23 years. As we move into the general election campaign season, we must sustain this mature attitude to campaigning and ultimately voting. We must never see it as a do or die affair. We must all remember democracy is about the will of the majority. There must be winners and losers. I will therefore take this opportunity on this very special day to ask all candidates to continue running issue focused campaigns and to treat opponents with dignity. As leaders, you must all showcase high character and never forget that the world is watching us and Africa looks up to Nigeria to provide example in governance. The tone you set at the top will surely be replicated in your followers. For the voters, I am pleased to inform you that in the last seven years, 
our government across all tiers has made significant investments to reform and enhance our electoral laws, systems, and processes to safeguard your votes. The executive, legislature, and judiciary were and still remain united and committed to ensure those reforms are fully implemented in the 2023 general elections. Fellow Nigerians, your right to choose your government will be preserved and protected. I know many of us are concerned with the rise in insecurity due to terrorist activities in parts of the country. As a government, we are working hard to contain and address these challenges and ensure that the 2023 general elections are safe and secure for all Nigerians. To achieve this, however, we must all contribute. It is not the job of government alone. I ask all citizens to support and cooperate with our security agencies by reporting any suspicious characters and activities to law enforcement agencies. We can only have a safe country if we are able to prevent crime, not after the crime has been committed. On this official day, I want us all to put all victims of terrorist activities in our thoughts and prayers. I am living daily with the grief and worry for all those victims and prisoners of terrorism and kidnapping. I and the security agencies are doing all we can to free those unfortunate countrymen and countrywomen safely. For those who have lost their lives, we will continue to seek justice for their families against the perpetrators. For those currently in captivity, we will not stop until they are freed and their kidnappers are brought to justice. If we all unite, we will be victorious against these agents of terror and destruction. We have reformed some of our security structures. Some of the defense assets we procured three years ago have arrived and have been deployed. Our cyber security and surveillance systems are being upgraded to further enhance our ability to track and trace criminal elements. We are also recruiting and training new personnel across all our security and intelligence agencies to strengthen the country's overall security. I will conclude this Democracy Day speech, my last as president, by assuring you of my commitment to protect Nigeria and the Nigerians from all enemies from within and outside. I am also promising you a free, fair, and transparent electoral process. And I am pleading with all citizens to come together and work with government to build a peaceful and prosperous nation. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Family, don't forget to subscribe, to get notified. And I see the show your support. Now say God go bless you too. Thanks on the bed.